Good morning, everybody. I have my cup of coffee. Got my tea. And what happens next? And we are the Sneeze. We are coming at you every Saturday morning. Brain information like germs. Just start talking. Zero. One. Everybody, welcome to the sneeze. the sneeze. My name is the. S Everybody, welcome to the sneeze. sneeze. All right, so <laughs> we're just um, I'm Worldwide Rev, Most that guy, bigger. and uh, we're just gonna talk to people, ourselves, the community. We're both uh, brand building this year. Uh, we work in digital video and advertising and marketing. Um, what else? What else do we do, Dan? Yeah, so at Los Figure, we create content for influencers and brands. Uh, I traveled the world and did about 30 countries last year with a very influential influencer. And, mm. uh, you know, I'm expanding that business now and, you know, creating content for more, more large corporations and also influencers at the same time. Yeah, I'm not going to waste everybody's time. I'm just going to say ditto to all of that. And uh, we're going to keep it moving. Uh, we wanted to start the conversation and just like bring in our friends and our community, uh, you know, other people that are, we call professionals or just very skilled people in, um, you know, production of media of all sorts. And so I'm looking forward to bringing other guests onto the show, um, you know, adding value to everybody else who's building a brand and everybody else who's trying to start video production or digital marketing or advertising. So re really looking forward to some of the guests we have coming up. Yeah, I think the main point of this show is to take the network that Worldwide Rev has and myself and kind of highlight them, uh, do kind of like a micro networking sort of experiment with this, uh, the Sneeze show. If you're not experienced in a certain field, you know, there's always personal experience that you can take away from somebody else's story and help build that into your own business and your own brand. Yeah. So that's going to be really cool. Um, the other day I, I caught up with um, Brian Stetler, who's a TV show host on cable news, uh, CNN, and he's got a channel, um, he's got a show every uh, Sunday for about an hour, and I got to catch up with him, and uh, we got three tips that uh, he uses uh, for creating segments on cable news. episodes or segments what are kind of like your three uh, boxes that you kind of check off that just like really makes a good story really is going to captivate an audience yeah what, what are some of the, like your top three things that you make sure is in a segment or yeah. an episode i'll try to limit to just three i mean here's what comes to mind mm -hmm. uh, my show is on sundays on cnn mm -hmm. so i have a lot of jobs at cnn but my, my first job is, is hosting a television show on sundays mm -hmm. what i'm thinking about is what is what have viewers not heard yet what is unique that I can bring to the table that hasn't already been set on television all week long? Which guests can I book that haven't been heard all week long? Which guests have not been seen on television before? So I'm trying to think about what's unique, what's differentiated in this incredibly noisy, uh, incredibly competitive world. Um, and on a, on the, on the, from the standpoint of television production, I'm thinking about what visuals are gonna stand out. What can I do to make the show look different than every other show on CNN or on cable news? Um, I oftentimes fail, but I, I think that the goal is to make something that's different than every other hour. Right. Because in cable news, it's a never-ending wheel of programming. What can I do to make my hour look different and sound different and be different? And just kind of like how you said with you know the cell phone and the creation of the cell phone, how are you finding ways to like source information, source credible information, and just kind of like stay ahead of the curve, or just kind of keep people's gauge or their their gaze in, in your direction? Well, what, in what an environment where everybody is a source and everybody is a member of the media, mm -hmm. because everybody has a phone and everybody has a Facebook account, our job more and more is to verify or debunk information. To, you may see it on Twitter, but you need to hopefully need to turn on CNN to know if it's true. And I think that's increasingly our role to be verifying and adding fact checking and context to what's all, all over the web. Right on, right on. How long have you been in journalism? Uh, I guess 15 years. Now? Yeah. Always in front of the camera, behind the camera producing? Or... Uh, no, I never thought I'd be in TV. I had a blog about TV news 15 <laughs> years ago, and uh, and then I joined the New York Times. So TV is still new to me. All right, right cool. on. Thank, Thank you. you for your time, brother. Thanks a lot. It. 
be at 2-1. So I caught Brian there after uh, he was on the panel after the screening of um, Divide and Conquer, uh, the story of Roger Ailes, um, directed by, I think it was Alexis Bloom. Uh, it was a very interesting story, but, you know, um, out of the whole panel, I kind of gravitated towards him because, because you know, he's got a, a regular show and he was just kind of talking more about building. And so it was really cool to catch up with him. And, and I like the idea of giving people uh, information and having a contained environment and just raising the value uh, of a production. And, you know, even with, with getting media from the field and this, that, this, that, it's, it's the story and the platform. And everybody sees it a lot and they feel comfortable like it's, it's a credible place to get information so i really enjoy uh you know getting a few tips from brian yeah i really liked the sort of points that brian made in the interview that you had with him specifically what what viewers haven't heard yet right mm -hmm. and then also what guests uh can he book that week that hasn't been on tv or hasn't been on his show right or on a different show to, for that matter and then also uh, make something different every hour and visuals to stand out, right? So to kind of take from it, you know, nowadays the cell phone allows people to shoot and do everything on their own, and you can do it very low end, right? But he also makes the key point, which is, you know, everyone that can be a journalist, right? Anyone can be a journalist, but as you have a sort of leveling up, as, you, as things begin to sort of grow, what happens is, is you get put at a higher podium than just everyone, right? Like your actual information needs to be vetted and needs to be the place where it's trustworthy, right? At the highest right. level, right? And that's right. that's where the sort of growth and production value really helps because it's a direct reflection on your audience, right? As you kind of progress and grow your own um, sort of real media, real studio company, right? And in Brian's case, he may be an individual journalist, but he still has to hold himself at a very high level because of who he's associated with. Well, it's years of credibility. You know, he said that he started off uh, just running a blog at home about television and, you know, he started building his audience. And, you know, um, that that's a story in its own because, you know, nowadays you, you're not looking at, uh, well, you are, but a lot of influencers don't have like 15 years of history building trust, gaining an audience and all this kind of stuff. It's very rapid, uh, the, the growth of influencers and the growth of information. And that's kind of where his other, his other line of, you know, you have to have good, uh, do something different, you know? And if kids are out there and people are out there with all this technology and able to create their own video production and they do it differently, that's what people are gonna see, you know? So it's like, you have to do things differently. You have to progress. And um, I, I think that's what he was getting across there. And as, as anybody else who's out there, you know, uh, having a style is just as good as, as having a story, but they, they have to balance out. You have to have a good story and a good style. Yeah, 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 that's exactly right. I think, and that's something we're gonna cover a lot more on this show, right? Which is how to do stuff like that, how we've, you know, experienced those sort of things throughout our careers. And then, what, oh, yeah. and then what we're going to have coming up because we, we've got a lot of cool things that we're up to right now. So yeah, let's just let's just segue out of this and, and talk about all the stuff we've got coming up, Dan. You were talking to uh, some of the Mad Hooies who are uh, you know they, they produce a lot of video content for their brand. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm. Uh, go ahead, I wrap that up. No, no, you're probably looking at something else on the internet. No, no, I'm not looking at anything on the internet. I'm actually <laughs> just thinking about how excited I am to have the Mad Hueys on and Joel because it's probably going to be a little bit longer of a, a second episode. One, One two, two, three. three. We, we are Mad Hueys. Yeah. We're gonna right. kind of go through a little bit of their background, like how they started their company, why they did it. I think if we can even cover some of the mistakes, right? Because I think it's also important to learn where and when you need to do things at the right time. We need those. You, you can't just, you know, get somebody's story without the hiccups because then you're not learning from it. All right, dude, I'll see you later. I'll upload this. Okay. Achoo. <coughs>